Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video, we'll look at how to justify a single flex item in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've set up a simple flex container and created five child flex items inside it, each with a width and height of 150 pixels. To begin with, let's briefly look at the justify content property. Because I'm working in the default flex direction of row, my flex items are aligned side by side and the justify content property works by positioning them along the horizontal or row axis. For example, if I set justify content on the parent flex container to center, all of my flex items will be positioned together in the horizontal center. Likewise, if I apply justify content space between, the available free space will be distributed between all of my flex items along the horizontal axis. The common theme here is that the justify content property affects all of the child flex items at once. Because there is no justify self property in CSS Flexbox, if you want to justify a single flex item, you need to use auto margins instead. Let's remove the justify content property from our parent flex container, so everything returns to the default position. For this first example, let's imagine we want item 1 to remain at the left edge of the container, with the rest of our flex items pushed over to the right hand edge. There's a couple of different ways we can achieve this. The first is simply to target flex item one in the CSS and give it a margin right of auto. Here in my HTML, you can see that for each of my flex items, I've given them a unique class of item one, item two, and so on. So to target my first flex item, I'm targeting my item one class. So I'll give that a margin right of auto. Auto margins work by assigning a margin to the specified edge or edges of a flex item, which is equal to all of the available free space along a given axis. In this example, we're telling the browser that we want flex item one to have a margin on its right hand side equal to the width of all the available free space inside the parent flex container. In other words, we want the size of the right margin to equal all of the free space along the horizontal row axis. As we can see in the browser, the area of free space that was originally to the right of all of our flex items has now been assigned as the margin on the right of flex item one. This auto margin creates space between item one and the rest of the flex items which gives us the exact layout we wanted. Just to further demonstrate this concept of auto margins, let's quickly look at another way that we could achieve this same layout. If we want the gap to be here between items one and two, instead of applying a right margin to item one, we could apply a left margin to item two. So let's delete the margin right property from item one and instead target item two and give it a margin left of auto. As we can see, we've created the same layout, but this time by using slightly different CSS. The auto margin is equal to all of the free space along the width of the parent container, but instead of being attached to the right of item one, it's now attached to the left of item two. Similarly, if we wanted the gap to be between items three and four instead of between one and two, we'd simply need to attach the margin either to the right of item three or the left of item four. So let's delete our current margin on item two and give item three a margin right of auto. As we can see, we've repositioned the gap and therefore adjusted the layout of our flex items. For this next example, we're going to use multiple auto margins to achieve a different layout. 
First, let's delete our existing margin from item 3. Let's say we want item 2 to be separated from the rest of the flex items, so that item 1 is on the left of the container, and items 3, 4 and 5 are over at the right of the container, with item 2 spaced evenly between them. We've seen how using a single auto margin on one edge, either the left or the right, creates space on that side of the flex item. So now let's combine both the left and right margins to create space on either side. So on item 2, we'll first add a margin left of auto. As expected, all of the available space is now positioned to the left of item 2. If we also add a margin right of auto, we'll see that the total free space has now been divided into two with half of it on the left and half of it on the right of item 2. This has the effect of separating item 2 from all of the other flex items by equal amounts on either side. There's no problem with leaving these two lines of code in place if that's what you prefer, but just to tidy up our code a bit, we could use the margin shorthand property instead. So in place of our two separate margin properties, I'll enter margin and give it a value of zero space auto. The margin shorthand property accepts up to four values, each separated by a space. The first value is for margin top, then margin right, margin bottom, and finally margin left. It always starts from the top and then works round in the clockwise direction. If you only provide two values, as I have here, the first value affects both margin top and bottom, and the second affects both margin left and right. So in this case, I've set the top margins both to zero so there's no margin applied at all, and then both of the left and right margins I've given a value of auto. As we can see in the browser, this has no effect on the front end of our layout, but if you can achieve the same effect with fewer lines of code, it's generally good practice to do so. For this next example, let's imagine we want item 1 on the left of the container, item 5 on the right, and then the rest of the items together in the horizontal center. Let's begin by deleting our margins from item two, so everything is reset to default. As we did in the first example in this video, let's give item one a margin right of auto to keep it stuck to the left edge, but separate it from the rest of the items. Next, we want item 5 to remain stuck to the right edge of the container, while 2, 3 and 4 are positioned here in the center. To do this, we'll simply mirror what we did to item 1 by giving item 5 a margin left of auto. As we can see, the available space in the row has been divided in two, with half assigned to the right margin of item 1 and half assigned to the left margin of item 5. This gives us the layout we wanted. I briefly want to touch on how to justify and align single flex items, or in other words, how to affect their position on both the horizontal and vertical axis. So far, we've only justified single items along the horizontal axis because we're working in the row flex direction. For this example, Let's keep the layout that we've just created, but imagine that we want item 5 down in the bottom right corner of the flex container. While Flexbox doesn't provide us with a justify self property to justify single items along the main axis, it does give us an align self property that lets us align single items along the cross axis. Because we're working in the row flex direction, Align self will align individual flex items in the vertical direction, the cross axis. To demonstrate this, let's give item 5 an align self value of flex end, which aligns it at the end of the cross axis, which is the bottom of the parent container. 
As we can see, item 5 remains up against the right edge of the container, thanks to the margin left auto value that we provided earlier, but is now also aligned at the bottom because of the align self value we just applied. If we change this value to center instead of flex end, item 5 will now be positioned in the vertical center of the container. We could also achieve the same effect by using auto margins on the top and or bottom, for example by giving item 5 a margin top of auto. This will push it down to the bottom of the container. However, as Flexbox provides us with a property specifically for this use, it makes sense for us to use it here instead of auto margins. Just remember that align self always works on the cross axis and that the cross axis direction depends upon the flex direction of the container. If the flex direction is set to the default of row, the cross axis will run opposite to this in the vertical direction. If the flex direction is set to column, the cross axis runs opposite to this in the horizontal direction. I think that just about covers the basics of justifying and aligning single flex items in CSS Flexbox. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.